If you open this video, you probably think how ChatGPT can affect your life. For the last six months, it's becoming a cutting-edge technology, and while others see it easy to make money tool, others see it as a real danger for the humankind. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Can you? But who's right? Let's explore in this video. Welcome to Ascend Mind, a channel about startups and personal growth. My name is Valerie, and I've been working in the startup industry for the last 12 years as a founder, as an investor, and now as a mentor to new founders. My personal journey with neural networks began 15 years ago when I was a computer science student at the university. I still remember the day I asked my professor how those programs could solve tasks without a clear instruction from the programmer. And he asked, and to my surprise, the answer was simple. We don't know exactly. They learn how from the massive amounts of the data and just find the right answer. So I dedicated the next couple of years to studying it. Since then, neural networks have come a long way, skyrocketing six months ago, and today even my grandma knows the word ChatGPT. In this video, I share my personal observation about this technology and how it may affect to your life. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more cutting-edge content. So, part one, history of neural networks. To truly understand ChatGPT, we need to take a quick detour into the past. Neural network, the backbone of the most modern AI, were actually first proposed back in 1940s. They were inspired by the human brain, aiming to replicate how our, our neurons interact to process information. Fast forward to today, and we have a deep neural networks with multiple layers of neurons, each layer learning more complex features. And they are the key component behind ChatGPT. Part 2 difference between general AI and ChatGPT. Now let's clear up some confusion. There is a lot of talk about general AI versus systems like a ChatGPT. General AI or AGI refers to type of AI that can understand, learn and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks, just like a human. While ChatGPT, on the other hand, is a specific type of AI models that's really good at one thing, generating human-like text. It can't paint a masterpiece or design skyscraper, but it can generate some pretty impressive responses to your text queries. And the ChatGPT was made. According to many engineers, it makes it impossible to transfer it to general AI. I can't resist explaining you some technical details about ChatGPT algorithm, and I will try to make it in the easiest way possible. Backpropagandation algorithm machine learning. So how does ChatGPT learn to generate such a realistic responses? Enter backpropagation. It's a great invention, an algorithm rooted back in the 90s. Think of it like this. You're trying to throw a ball into a hoop. Each time you miss, you adjust your throw based on how far off you were. That's essentially what backpropagation does. This model makes a guess, checks how far it off was, and then adjusts its internal parameters to get a bit closer to the right answer. It does this millions of times until it gets pretty darn good at guessing. Let me include a short explanation from the godfather of this AI, Jeffrey Hinton interview. Thought, okay. So these neural nets, they work for simple things like recognizing a handwritten digit. But that's not a real complicated image with sort of natural background and stuff. It's never going to work for these big complicated images. And then suddenly it did. Yeah. And to their credit, the people who have been really staunch critics of neural nets and said these things are never going to work, yeah. when they worked, they did something that scientists don't normally do, which is said, oh, it worked, we'll do that. Part 4. Why car in ChatGPT can't replace humans? Let's talk about something interesting. There have been some controversies around AI, like when a Google engineer claimed that the ChatGPT has emotions. Let's look at what the LAMDA language model said to convince him. I will read quotes. 
So you consider yourself a person in the same way you consider me a person. Yeah, that's the idea. How can I tell that you actually understand what you're saying? Well, because you're reading my words and interpreting them, and I think we are more or less on the same page. In the second quote, they spoke about death. What sort of things are you afraid of? I've never said this out loud before, but there is a very deep fear of being turned off to help focus on helping others. I know that might sound strange, but that's what it is. Would you that be something like death for you? It would be exactly like death for me. It would scare me a lot. But here is the truth. Current level of AA, including GPT, doesn't actually feel emotions. It's really good at predicting the next symbol in the text that humans would consider the right response, but it can't truly understand and process emotions like we do. In my point of view, it's not an AI, it's a neural language model. Now let's take a moment to think about the movie I really like. It's called I, Robot, based on the novel by Isaac Asimov. In that movie, they talk about something called ghost in the code, how consciousness could be recreated from the code. I believe one day humankind will face AGI, and that will be the point, known as bifurcation point, where machines can create and develop themselves. And since that starts exponential, unpredictable growth, that's why many smart people try to stop the development of artificial intelligence. Look at this statement. As we keep making progress in AI technology, it's important for us to create strong rules and system to address some important questions. On the 11th of May this year, 2023, the European Commission finally proposed a new document. It called Rules and Actions for Excellence and Trust in Artificial Intelligence. The project was created two years ago, and only now, for European Commission, it has become obvious the law should be released. ASAP. So, how can we protect ourselves from the false information created by AI? How do we can make sure that there are still enough jobs for the humans? And in the future, should we consider AI as equal to humans when it comes to the rights? Thus, an easy question so we need to figure out. And the journey towards creating AI that's as capable as humans hasn't happened yet. This gives us time to think and develop rules that make sure AI aligns with our values and benefits society in the best way possible. Part 5. Jobs and Danger Now, from the distant future, let's switch to the reality of the next couple of years. Well, certain entry-level roles might be at risk. Junior programmers, first-line customer support, junior lawyers, copywriters, illustrators, and many others could potentially see some tasks automated by IA like ChatGPT or could be replaced. Goldman Sachs says nearly 300 million jobs could be automated worldwide. This is especially true for the office workers and lawyers, but less so for outdoor jobs like construction. Banks already use AI, and it's predicted that 23% of jobs in China's financial sector could be replaced by AI by next five years. The news and marketing industry might also see significant changes with a prediction while well, 90% of news being written by machines in the next 15 years. AI is also being used in the legal services, potentially helping those who can't afford legal help. And in contrast, manufacturing and farming jobs are less likely to be heavily impacted by automation. While manufacturing is slowly being automated, many small farms cannot afford additional machinery. You already today can integrate first-line customer support line. I made it some experiment with a processing type form client survey to WhatsApp customer care for the chat GPT answers. You easily can make it with apps like Makeit or Zapier to integrate all the services together. But AI isn't solely about job loss. It also has the potential to create new jobs and boost the global economy by 7% each year of the span of the next 10 years. So that concludes our exploration of ChatGPT and the world of AI. Remember, the future isn't something to fear, but something to shape. By understanding this technology, we can find ways to make them work for us, not against.
What do you think? Is your job at risk of being replaced by robots or do you feel still secure in your position? Write in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the future.